Christmas dinner is a joyful occasion, but if you're doing the cooking, the pressure to deliver a perfect meal can be a bit of a stress. To help you out, we've got a few science-based tips that'll help you nail some of the most important parts of the meal. Crispy roast potatoes, Brussels sprouts to win over the most ardent detractor, and a spectacular flaming Christmas pudding. Brussels sprouts are members of the Brassica family. They've evolved to produce bitter compounds as a defense against herbivores. They do this by storing precursor molecules in their cells. When the plant's damaged, the precursor molecules are released from their packaging and come into contact with enzymes that convert them into the bitter compounds that we love to hate. It's no wonder then that around the Christmas dinner table, nothing divides opinion like sprouts. I think they're delicious if they're cooked well, but if you're a hater, there are a few science-based tips that might just win you over. One. Eat your sprouts with red wine. Now, I don't need much encouragement to have a glass of red wine with Christmas dinner, but there was a study that found that eating sprouts with red wine reduced the perception of bitterness in the sprouts. The idea is that the tannins in the red wine make proteins in your saliva clump together, and they may interfere with the distribution of bitter compounds in your mouth. Either that, or you're too drunk to care. Two, exposure therapy. We can learn to like foods that we dislike by pairing them with foods that we do like. In one study, children aged three to five were given sprouts every day as a snack for 14 days. One group got sprouts on their own and the other group got sprouts with cream cheese. And then at the end, all of them were given sprouts on their own and asked if they liked them. Among the children who had sprouts on their own, only a quarter of them said that they liked the taste. But among the group that had them with cream cheese, 72% said they liked them. So if you don't like sprouts, dip them in cream cheese, wrap them in bacon, whatever works for you. Three, cook them right. For me, the best ways to cook Brussels sprouts are frying and roasting. Here, I've sliced them up thin and I'm gonna fry them in some oil. The key is to get them nice and brown. High heat facilitates the Maillard reaction, in which sugars and amino acids react and produce a wide range of delicious compounds. When you get them nice and brown using these methods, cruciferous vegetables develop wonderful nutty and savory flavors that you don't get from boiling them in water. Four, flavor enhancers. You can also offset bitterness by exciting your other tastes. I like to add shallots for sweetness, a squeeze of lemon juice for acidity, and bacon or parmesan for salt and umami. To be honest, these magic ingredients will perk up almost any vegetable side dish. Crispiness is one of the qualities we most prize in food. But why do we find it so appealing? It could be because it often arises when raw food turns into delicious and nutritious cooked food, or maybe we associate it with high fat food, which we find particularly rewarding. Whatever the reason, a crispy roast potato is one of the ultimate delicious and rewarding foods. Here are a few tips to guide you to crunchy perfection. One, choose the right potato. There are two broad types of potato, waxy and floury. The waxy ones have thinner skins, a smoother texture, and they stay firmer when they're cooked. They're good in salads, but for roasting, you really want the floury type, which have a higher starch content. King Edwards like these, or Maris Piper or Russet are all good varieties. Two, boiling. Potato cells are packed with starch granules, which swell and burst during cooking, forming a gel. It's this gelatinized starch that forms the crispy crust on a roast potato. The cells of the potato are held together by a type of sugar molecule called pectin. Boiling the potato also breaks down the pectin, which helps fat get into the potato when you roast it and form a nice thick crust. You can help that even more by adding bicarbonate of soda to the water to make it alkaline. This weakens the pectin so the potato softens more quickly. About half a teaspoon is enough for two liters of water. Three, fat. We're gonna be roasting these potatoes at about 200 degrees Celsius, which is quite hot and close to the smoke point of some types of oil like extra virgin olive oil. That means the flavor is gonna be affected and it may start to taste bitter. I prefer to use a neutral tasting oil like sunflower or vegetable oil for this, but you could also use duck fat or goose fat if you prefer the extra flavor. I'd also avoid adding garlic or herbs at this stage because they may burn in the hot oven, but if you want to, you can add them towards the end of cooking. Preheat the roasting tray with the fat and then toss the potatoes in the fat well. After about 20 or 30 minutes, give them a turn. Keep watching them closely. They should take about an hour to get brown, but the exact cooking time depends on your oven and your potatoes. A flaming pudding is the perfect finale to the Christmas meal. 
Follow these rules to make sure you get a fire as bright as Rudolph's nose. 1. Get it hot. Because alcohol is easily vaporised, it mixes well with the air. It's important that both the pudding and the spirits are hot, so that more alcohol is vaporised. If you try and like cold spirits, it's going to be disappointing. It's not the worst. 2. Grab the strong stuff. You need a spirit that's at least 40% alcohol, ideally. But if you've got anything stronger, that's going to give you a bigger and longer lasting flame. Here we've got some 63% overproof rum. Three, add a bit of color. Pure alcohol burns with a blue flame, which is nice, but a bit muted. If you choose a spirit that's got sugar in it, or you add sugar, you should get a luminous yellow flame. The yellow flame Whoa. happens when some of the carbon doesn't get oxidized and gives off fine particles of soot. When the soot particles ignite, they make a bright yellow flame. Nice. Happy holidays from all of us at New Scientist. Our gift to you is a 20% discount on a subscription to our magazine. Click the link in the description to sign up. We'll be back with more videos in the new year, so subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any. Merry Christmas! Ho, 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 ho!